Well, kind of a shocking story, although I should say it does come from UPI, United Press International. So since it is a professional news media organization, it should be taken with a grain of salt. However, uh, UPI is reporting an astonishing uh, study coming out of Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center, which says that three out of four Americans plan to continue to wear face masks and continue social distancing after the pandemic is over. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. And uh, this is your right angle on something that I actually said, now that can't possibly be true. But then again, I look around me sometimes and I see people behaving in ways that I never thought could be true anyway. Uh, Steve, uh, I happen to think that a lot of this is the result of, of the news media and politicians just scaring the bejesus out of people for the for the longest possible time, providing no context, providing nothing, just just an endless campaign of fear pushing a year now. Does it strike you unusual, Steve, that people are saying, well, you know, um, once we're, we get herd immunity and everybody's gotten their vaccinations and it's just a it's just not a thing anymore, like measles or whatever the case may be. We're still going to wear the masks and we're still going to maintain six foot separation and we're still going to sit every other uh, booth at, at, at a restaurant. And if we get in an elevator and there are two or three people in there without masks, we're not riding. Does that surprise you that three out of four Americans, according to this study, say that's what they plan to do? It's, as you say, the result of a, a almost year long scare campaign. I suppose it's natural. I just I'm so saddened that it's natural here. I thought the American people were made of sturdier stuff than that. Um, 20, 25 percent. Uh, I think that was the figure you would have guessed that you said during our backstage. I would segment. have thought that would have been high. Yeah. Yeah. High, very sure. high. I, I, I could I could have taken that as high. But OK, you've got 20 to 25 percent of the people who are who are worried or in a significant fraction of them are going to be in a risk group or whatever. OK, I, I, I could accept that. But 75, 80 percent, that's uh, that is just nuts as far as I'm concerned. Um, this the, the scaremongering is taking is taking a toll, I suppose, on our uh, on our national psyche because they won't talk about the real facts. Uh, the fact is, I just saw this this morning. Typically, around this time of year, we've got about 35 million uh, active or total uh, uh, flu cases. This year, the CDC has tracked flu cases in the hundreds. So in a sense, this whole thing is social distancing. It, it, it works, especially, I think, the hand washing. Um, everybody I know who goes to CPAC and comes home with the C plague didn't wash their hands all the time. <laughs> um, the people I know who told me, if you're going to CPAC, just wash your hands all the time. Don't shake hands with anybody if you don't absolutely have to. I started doing that a few years ago. And guess what? I stopped getting C plague, but I didn't have to wear a mask. I didn't have social distance. You know, it's a, it's a huge conference. Um, the fact is we've had about a half million excess deaths, as they say, in 2020. So clearly this COVID-19 took a real toll, but we know by and large, who the victims of this awful respiratory infection are. It's the elderly and it's the people with comorbidities. And that is about it, aside from some freak outlier cases, which, yes, happen. Those freak outlier cases also happen with the regular flu. And the fact that nobody's getting the flu this year, but a lot of people are still catching COVID, tells us just how infectious this nasty little bug is. But we also know how survivable it is. If you're in a risk group, you've got a 5% chance of it killing you if you catch it. If you're not in a risk group, you've got a 99.6% chance of surviving it. Odds, that's my age group, 51. And those odds improve to almost five nines as you get younger and younger down the age cohorts. So, Bill, we know the numbers. We know the facts. Our viewers know the numbers and know the facts. But apparently there are about, I don't know, 250 million Americans who have been scaremongered into continuing this awfulness that we've already endured for far, far too long. Uh Scott, how much of this do you think is just, I mean, to say that this whole thing hasn't been politicized is just nuts. Uh, 
we find now that Donald Trump is no longer in office that uh, turns out hydroxychloroquine actually works pretty well, according to uh, surveys that were basically kept quiet because Donald Trump supported it. And we heard that Amazon is now going to deliver vaccines and, and testing kits now that Biden is president and, and all the rest of it. So to say that it's not politicized is just doesn't bear scrutiny. I'm not interested in, in those particular aspects of it. What I'm interested in is, do you think that because of the obvious politicization of all of this, people's confidence in, in healthcare, in, in public health officials is so low that they're going to continue to protect themselves? Or, or conversely, do you think that, that their confidence in people like Dr. Fauci has reached practical deification levels where it's only his wisdom that is keeping you know, your family alive? I, I don't think either of those things. And I think that um, our society is fairly well self-regulating and it really doesn't matter that much what government officials say. I think people make decisions for their own health and safety and frankly, to do the things they want to do. So in my other job, eight hours a day, five days a week, I'm wearing a mask. Um, I don't like it. Neither does anybody who comes into my place of business where I'm wearing this mask, where they have to do it for an hour, you know? Uh, but I'm, I've got that mask on uh, practically the whole day. Um, nevertheless, I'm surrounded by people. There are lots of them. I don't know them. I don't know who's sick. I don't know who's not sick. The thing that we often leave out of the equation here is not just the death rate or the suffering from physically getting the disease. In many cases, uh, people are walking around asymptomatically and testing positive for the disease. They actually have it. They're carriers, but it hasn't taken them down. The, the one thing that we tend to overlook is the toll that happens on somebody who does test positive and then has to leave work and has to quarantine and has to stay away for a certain period of time. Some employers are great about that and they make sure that that person is kept whole as far as pay goes. You know, I'm working in a straight commission environment and if you're out too long, you run out of uh, the, your, your ability to draw money from that pool. There are a lot of people who work for smaller businesses. There's nothing in place for them to do that. If they're out sick for two weeks or 21 days or something like that, they're just going to lose that income. And so I don't want my colleagues to get sick. I don't want to be the cause of them getting sick. And I don't know who's carrying this stuff. So as long as this animal is out running loose, <laughs> um, I'm glad to wear the mask to protect myself and others from the potential spread of this disease. Uh, that said, I, I really don't think that people are wearing the masks because of what Dr. Fauci said or because of what some you know, Democrat governor said, who thinks he's all that. I think people realize that there is, there, there's a disease out there and they don't want to get it and they don't want to give it to other people. And for the most part, the, the, the jerk quotient in the population <laughs> is still very small. There are still very, very few people who come into our store and are trying to make some political statement by not wearing a mask and, and you know, and strutting around without that. It is infinitesimally small. And to me, that just shows the good sense of the American people and we're caught up in the political aspects of it because we consume news like crazy, but real normal people just have to go about their lives and, and they want to be able to do their jobs without getting sick or without making someone else sick. Well, I fear we might have lost the, the point here. Um, the point is not whether or not it's wise to wear masks now. The point is when the pandemic is over, when people... Yes. When, when oh, it that is, said, I don't believe your stats. Uh, not your stats. I don't believe UPI stats. I think that the people who were answering that question told the surveyor what they thought they wanted to hear. And they were trying to act like they were hyper safe. I don't think people are really going to do that, or certainly not 75% of the people, to directly address the question. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I suspect there's a lot of truth to that too. A lot of it is, I wouldn't really call it virtue signaling because it doesn't strike me as that kind of intentional buff, you know, so much as just trying to sound like a reasonable person and, and not somebody who's a little, uh, you know, uh, selfish about these things. But with all of that said, I still believe that based on this report, I mean, if they're saying three quarters of the population, that means uh, th I think there must be some significant percentage of the population that is going to continue these these policies. Uh, for example, here at the end of the article, uh, we get a, a direct quote from um, uh, uh, Dr. Gosenheimer, uh, Gonsenhauser, excuse me, um, and he says, flu, flu cases and hospitalizations are way down compared to recent years. And a lot of that is likely because precautions like masking, physical distancing and hand hygiene are working to prevent the flu. So 
And, and he goes on to say, I think a lot of people realize that what we've learned from COVID-19 can be applied more generally to keep our population healthy. And this is the point I want to get to. If you take COVID-19 out of the picture, let's say that the, the, the vaccine is distributed to everybody and COVID-19 is, is essentially vanished as a cause of death in the United States. Will people continue to do these social distancing measures to do things like reduce deaths from the flu and so on? And I'm deeply concerned that they will. But but the thing that, that I am so appalled about by all of this is just how dehumanizing, and I mean dehumanizing in the, in the purest sense of the word, these procedures are. You you can make the case that they're necessary or were necessary. People believe whether they were or not is not relevant. There's no question that it's easy to imagine an airborne disease like Ebola, something like that, that was 80% fatal, yeah. where these kind of measures would be appropriate and necessary and, in fact, essential. But what I am deeply concerned about is the idea that when those conditions subside, people will have have become so used to the dehumanization aspect of it that they're going to continue. This scares the bejesus out of me, if you really want to know. When I go to the to the grocery store or when I go to the to the pharmacy, I find the thing about the pandemic that bothers me the most is I look down on the floor and I see those six foot distance uh, little markers there and I say, is anyone ever going to pull those up? Are those things ever going to come off the floor here ever? Is there ever going to be a time when somebody's going to say, well, you know what, that was a tough year or two years or five years? Are they ever going to come up? And if the answer is no, and if we're not ever going to go to football games anymore and sit next to each other anymore, and we're never going to be able to see our faces anymore, and if we expect that from this point forward, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we don't get sick, we're going to, we're going to suffer psychological consequences of this that, that, that make any kind of respiratory disease look like uh, child's play. Human interaction is about reading people's faces. That's what human interaction is. That's what social animals do. And the idea that somehow people have been so badly scared by this politicization of things and, and this and this constant fear mongering above and beyond what is necessary to inform the public of a serious issue, I am deeply concerned. That, that these changes to our society will, will go further in terms of separating us from our fellow human beings, which is a trend that is being driven home by a sledgehammer with the internet in the first place. And I find this particular study to be extremely disturbing. And I, for one, personally, am looking forward to partying real hard on the day, if that day ever comes, when I see people taking those those social distancing markers down because this crisis has passed. I'm looking forward to the day when I can do what Steve Green said he would do in our backstage show. And that is, he said, when he gets out of a building that he has to wear the mask on, when he gets back uh, free of the rest of the crowd, he rips that mask off like he's a doctor who just lost a patient on a, on a, on a bad um, TV medical show. Uh, I am looking for, forward to that day a very, very uh, great deal. And any suggestion that that day may never come to me is probably the most scary thing about this pandemic that I've seen in the last year. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. This show is made possible by the members at BillWhittle.com, and we will see you next week right here on Right Angle.